welcome once more onto our special Games Master Holiday Camp. Now, a lot of people ask me, Dominic, you keep mentioning Auntie Marisha and her special culinary expertise, but we never actually see her. Does she exist? Well, the reason is, Auntie Marisha, it's very difficult to get her out of the kitchen, but today she has, and if you'd like to cast your eyes up there, we can actually see her. She's servicing some of the members of our audience, so if you can all uh, give her a little bit of a wave to Auntie Marisha there. Auntie Marisha carrying on serving up her tonic for the troops and we'll go on to tonight's first challenge to be set by the Games Master. Salutations. I advise you to don your thermal underwear for the evening's first foray on a frosty little number called Fire and Ice. The task is to guide cool coyote through the secret Arctic level in less than two minutes. But beware. You will not be able to exit the level unless you have collected a key, the last segment of which is being guarded by the resilient, abominable snowman. Do watch your footing on those slippery surfaces. And guiding Cool Coyote through the chafing polar winds tonight, please welcome from Stratford, Coolwinder Rye! <laughs> Welcome, Kurunda. Now, I know you wanted to bring along your own joysticks, which you actually make. Do you want to talk us through a couple yeah, of them? I was going to use this one, but because I was practicing so much, it's broken now. I can hear it. <laughs> it does. So I'm going to use this one. Okay, so how, how did you make that one? What your, your favourite? It was like, it was a joint venture between my dad, my uncle and me. That was originally a lunchbox, which was cast in aluminium. That's from my dad's work, and that's from a fruit machine. Okay, this is the one you're opted for tonight. Do you feel yeah. confident for your challenge? Not really, but it's only a game. Okay, I like to see that. Right, Kurwinder, if you'd like to prop yourself down in the game's playing chair, connect the joystick of your choice, and we'll get ready to play. And guiding me through the chilly waste tonight is Games Master's very own Stephen Carsey. Welcome, Steve. Hello, Dominic. Now, Steve, any tips you can give Kowinda here? Well, as with so many Games Master challenges, it's all about speed. He's got to keep going, avoid all the obstacles, and keep a constant uh, supply of snowballs coming out. So, Kowinda has two minutes to get to the end of the level and defeat the Yeti. Kowinda, are you ready? Yes. Then off you go. Okay, off goes Kowinda in the guise of Cool Coyote. He's firing snowballs at these things, Steve. That's right. And then do they just fall to pieces? That's right. They get frozen and they're smashed into a shower of icy shards. He's been very cagey, he's waiting for a spout to come out of this whale. There you can see it there. Oh no, he hasn't oh. put it under, he's got to be careful he doesn't fall into this icy water here. Oh, oh no, Kowinda's lost one life already and he's only been gone for 30 seconds. Not the best of starts for Kowinda. He's gone back to wait for this little whale again, he's having all sorts of problems here Kowinda. He's got to watch this water, oh, oh. no, he's up oh. again! Kowinda's lost two lives, he's hardly even started Steve. I, I don't know what to Kuwinda. say. No, I'm completely lost for words, Dominic. Apart from retire. <laughs> and he's going oh no, he hasn't done it yet. Oh no. Oh, Kulwinda, my heart bleeds for you. <laughs> it's Go, yeah, yeah. yes. Kulwinda's right, the very, second part of the challenge. Very nasty challenge. fall here, right. He's, now there's a plethora of penguins here. He's right. got to get through all of them. He's he got to watch hurry. it. He's only got 51 seconds left here. It's his final life, he has to be so oh, there's careful, Dominic. Penguins going all over the place. He shot that one, he's going to freeze the other one, he's got another one. Okay, he's only got 41 seconds left. He's still going to get a lot further. Oh no, here he goes, he's going to make it. Yes, yes. he's made it through right. this Now, what's this, Steve? This is a nice ladder and he has to be very quick here because ultimately it does melt. And uh, Kuwinda's on the slippy time of it. There he is. Right, and here we will see a nice bridge forming across that chasm. Okay, he's only got 24 seconds left. There's all kinds of balls falling all over here, Steve. Yeah, it's all I over the place. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> I just thought Kuwinda was having a hard job. He's only got six seconds left. Another he's bit of the key. Another bit of the key. Two bits of the key he's got. But he's still got a lot. Three, three bits, bits of the key. Of the key. He's only got ten seconds left though, and he's, he's lost his final life. Kuwinda's challenge is over. Bad luck, Kuwinda. Now. Kowinda, you were desperately unlucky with that, but you didn't actually get as far as we'd hoped. No, it was a very hard level. It's one of the secret levels, and also you need two warps to get there. And another thing, that wasn't my best joystick. It was my reserve joystick. So taking all that into account, I still done pretty good. Well, Kowinda, yeah. unfortunately, Games Master was left unstirred by that. 
and I have to actually defer to him to see what's going to happen to you. So, Games Master? I'm sorry, but that simply wasn't good enough. It's a banishment to the pit, I'm afraid. Oh dear, Kowinda. Well, while we mourn the sad end of Kowinda Rai, joystick maker, let's console ourselves with tonight's reviews. This week, we throw the Marcus of Queensbury rules out of the window as we look at beat-em-ups. First up on the NES, free your hometown from the clutches of some odious bloke or other in Street Gangs. It looks old. The graphics are pretty poor. The little men are sort of short squat creatures that sort of maraud about. I'd rather sit in a vat of horse manure than play this game. Give it to you worse than him as a birthday present. With games such as Star Wars and Mega Man 3 on the NES, this really is no competition against them. So, in my opinion, stay well clear. Next up on the Mega Drive, go head to head with the iron pumping yobbles of tomorrow in Fighting Masters. Fighting Masters is really a poor man's Street Fighter 2, to be honest. Basically, it's more just smash the buttons and direct the joystick. The graphics are good, the sound's good, but there's nothing really to make it really gel together. Hang on to your money that a little bit longer and buy Streets of Rage 2. Finally, they're lean, green and hype to the extreme on your Super NES screen. Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. These guys are tragically unhit. I mean, they're all rather pathetic these days, but the Turtles game itself is actually not too bad. Graphic design are both excellent, but you can get bored after a while, and it is very, very easy. I'd recommend this, but for young players only. Now for this week's feature, all games begin as the merest of glints in the eye of programmers. This week we look at System 3's putty from conception to completion with programming messiah Phil Thornton. I went to India for an uh, extended holiday in order to design a new type of game. Um, I wanted the game to be fluid rather than the usual old concept of a character with legs that runs and walks and jumps. I came up with the idea of silly putty. Basically I used to have a blob of it when I was a kid. To start with, uh, I sketched the Silly Putty in an a A2 pad, started him off as a sphere, put the eyes on him, then produced some movements for him on paper. Come on, then, I love you now. Hey. Every single nasty begins life as a similarly humorous yet two-dimensional drawing. Step two involves bringing them all to life. The initial graphics are drawn on the Amiga itself and turn, animated. Uh, you make up some sprite files, you make up some backgrounds to test. <laughs> Step three involves piecing the levels together block by scrupulous block. The nasties are placed in strategic positions and the gameplay is tested to make sure Phil hasn't been too overambitious. Step four, the sound. We bring in a musician, obviously composes a wacky theme tune, and we, we actually generate sampled effects for all of the characters. Too bad, just missed him. Step five, game graphics are pilfered for box illustrations and the game is up and kicking. So how long does it take a grown man with facial hair to make one game? Silly Putty took about 16 months of hard work for a team of seven people. If you want to caress the final product, Putty is available in the shops today. Alternatively, Putty is just one of hundreds of brand new games you'll be able to try out if you come to Games Master Live, a three-day exhibition at the Birmingham NEC on December 4th, 5th and 6th. You'll also be able to blast your mates on Quasar, the laser shoot 'em up Get a life for yourself like this young gentleman in virtual reality. Test drive all the latest arcade games and take on the Games Master himself at all the challenges you've seen on TV. For a very special day out, call the NEC box office on 021 780 4133. Do tell them if you're in the Games Master Club because there are special discounts for all members. Well, the diver got quite wet with those ones. Now it's time for everyone to pucker up for tonight's second challenge. So it's over to Games Master. 
I must confess to feeling a tad nostalgic as I introduce my next offering, as it reminds me of my days in the force many moons ago. The game is actually used to train pilots and involves landing a helicopter on a moving ship. A percentage is then awarded based on the speed, accuracy, and smoothness of your descent. Pip pip, carry home, front away. Now, our two airborne experts had a bit of practice on the rig's own helicopter earlier on, and now they're raring to go. We have a young lad from Kings Lynn taking on a professional pilot who just happens to be the most capped player and leading try scorer in English rugby history. So please welcome Matthew Freire and Rory Underwood. <laughs> Now, Rory, you're more used to flying jets for the Air Force rather than helicopters for the Navy. How are you going to find this tonight? Um, different, but I've had a few goes on it and uh, hopefully I should be able to master it. Okay, well, you scored many points for England, but you only get one try tonight. Okay, Matthew, you're a bit of a whiz at these games. How, how do you fancy your chances? Yeah, I think I can beat it pretty easily. Okay, then. Right, I would like you, Matthew, since you're the most confident one, to go first. Rory, if you'd like to just hang around behind Matthew there, and uh, maybe you can learn one or two things from him. And boarding me amidships for this challenge is Vivian Noge from GameZone. Welcome, Vivian. Hi, Dominic. OK, now this is quite a tough simulation, Vivian. Do you have any tips for our challengers? Apparently, the way to go about this one is to come in low, follow the wake of the ship, and put her down gently. OK, let's hope we can all learn a thing or two from that. Matthew, are you ready? Yep. Then off you go. OK, so here we see Matthew just slightly to the right of the ship. Now, where's he going to actually land on this ship? Is it quite near... I think it's quite near the back of it, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we see the little circle there. OK, he's pulling up a bit. He's losing speed. Oh, no, he's got his speed back up now. There's other helicopters dotted about. They're going to be a problem if he gets near them. That's it. Gently does it, Matthew. Oh, what's this little cross? In this? Right, the idea is to put the cross within the diamond, and that means you're on course for a good landing. He seems right. a bit out at the moment. He's got to guide it in there. He's got to guide it in. Oh, and he's landed. And Matthews has scored a 61%. Excellent score for Matthew there. If you'd like to see if proper pilot Rory Underwood can beat Matthew's mammoth score of 61%, join us after the break. Vivian Noge from GameZone beside me. We have just witnessed an amazing descent and launch from young Matthew Freire on an official Navy helicopter flight simulation. We've got Rory Underwood about to take his try. Rory, are you ready? I'm ready. Then off you go. Okay, so we expect big things from Rory here. Yeah. And right away, he's in a nice, nice little flight path there. He is. Yeah. He's, it's dead on course, I think. His altitude's got dropping down quite steadily yeah, here. He's got a right. nice He's moving in. Oh, this is looking very smooth. Very, very. He's not quite low enough. He's getting very... He's just, oh, he's been very, very safe for this. Oh, OK, here, we, here we have the little cross in the diamond. This is looking good. This is looking very smooth indeed. What a masterful display. Oh, and he's landed. Oh, no! No! Rory had him in 56%. So, young Matthew Perry has just picked him to be tonight's winner. Thank you. Now, Rory, your flight path looked beautiful. You were coming in great, and then just what, what happened at the end there? Um, I basically rushed it. I just uh, got the descent going on too fast, and it, and it called me up a heavy landing, so you lose 30% as soon as you do a heavy landing. Right, and they frown upon that in the Navy. Do they crush in the undercarriage? Yeah, it's a bit expensive. You're going to crush the undercarriage <laughs> all the time, yeah. OK, well, listen, Matthew, was it a problem for you at all? Uh, no, not really. No. <laughs> well, Matthew, as the winner tonight, you have won the greatest prize Channel 4 has to offer, the Golden Games Master Joystick! <laughs>
it's time for Games Master to answer your pitiful cries for help in the consultation zone. Welcome to my consultation area up here on the helipad. How can I help you? Every time I reach the last boss, Dracula, on Castlevania 4, I always die. Is there any way of improving my chances? There is indeed, so watch and learn. There's a secret supply of power-ups just before Dracula's inner sanctum. These will replenish your energy and increase your whip strength. Make a leap of faith into the space beneath the staircase. Keep walking left and you will drop to another platform where a cascade of essential power-ups awaits. Then return via the invisible staircase, pressing up and right on the joypad, and you leap back to safety. Thank you, that's great. It is rather, isn't it? Next, please. I've heard there's a wall for level one three on Taco Fox. Where is it? Where is it, um, please, would perhaps be in order? Some people's manners, I don't know. At the end of the level, jump on the springs. When you reach the highest one, release the crow, which will make a hole in the background. Do this three times, and a warp door will open up. Leap into the gap, walk as far as the first pot, jump on it, pull down, and you'll be warped to World 4. I think we have one more before closing up shop. On level 12 of Prince of Persia on the Game Boy, how do I get past the mirror image of myself? This doesn't reflect well on your game playing ability. Approach your mirror image, and as soon as you draw your sword, resheath it and walk on. Simple when you know how, isn't it? Yes, it is. Thanks. That revelation brings tonight's consultation to a close. See you along. So, some juicy tidbits from everyone's favourite tipster. Now for tonight's final challenge, we're going to carry on the theme from last week and make it a curly challenge. Last week, Danny Curley, Sega European Champion, declared himself open to any challenges from anyone in the audience on any Sega game. He excelled on Sonic last week, but how will he do this week? Let's find out and welcome the great man himself, Danny Curley! <laughs> Now, Danny, last week you excelled on Sonic, but you've got no idea what the game is this week. Does that make you nervous at all? Oh, well, obviously, yeah. I'm a bit curious what the game is, but it could be hit or miss. OK, beautifully put, Danny. OK, so let's find out who tonight's challenger is. Anybody who fancies the chances on any Sega game against Danny, please stick your arm up in the air. OK, let's have a look up here. Um, OK, there's a gentleman there. Would you like to come on down, please? Round of applause for tonight's challenger. Welcome to the show. Okay, thank you. So, what's your name? Warren. Warren, and where are you from, Warren? Wembley. Okay, so you've seen Curly in action before. How do you fancy your chances against him? I think him? I can do it. Okay, what's the challenge tonight? It's one period on Mario Lemieux hockey. One period on Mario Lemieux hockey. How do you fancy that one, Curly? I've never even heard of it. Never mind played um, it. I think it's an obscure classic, Danny. If you'd like to plump yourself down in the games playing chair, we'll get ready to start. And joining me in the sin bin tonight is Sega Pro's very own Dave Bad Boy Perry. Now, Dave, I know you've been known to slap a puck about for real. Now, how do these games compare to the real thing? Well, obviously, they're not as fast or as violent as the real thing. And if Danny hasn't played this game very much, then I think he might just caught, get caught out tonight. OK, let's find out. Are our two competitors ready? Then, off you go. I think Danny is playing from left to right in Danny's the red. Danny's in red. He's is he in Montreal? Montreal. Here we go, straight in with the face. So this is difficult. When the red green light lights up, that's when you can get hold of the puck. Okay, so Warren's making the first attack straight in the air, but it's well saved, saved by, saved by Danny. Danny's goalkeeper. These goalies and are incredibly hard to beat. And he's making a counter attack. He's taking out the side, flicked around the goals. Oh, 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 oh yes, God. Danny Curley scores. Goal for the European Championship straight away. First blood to Danny Curley. That's a beautiful goal. That's interesting because Warren was the pre-match.
Spanish favourite there. Well, he was, yeah, eating my words a little bit now. Oh, here comes one. He's got strength in numbers. Oh, oh lovely tackle him. from behind lovely. there. Perfectly legal, of course. Okay. Well, the ball's out there. It's a rebound, but there, one's picked it up again. So can't we... stop him, smack him. There we go again. See, lovely. Danny, Danny learns fast, doesn't he? Okay, we're about a quarter. Oh, it's up for the rebound, oh. but the goalie gets it. Nothing. It's unfortunate for the Greens getting hammered and having the weather those awful pits. Says, oh, we got a fight here, Dave. What's going to happen here? Oh, bit, bit of a punch up. We should go to a fight scene now. Here oh, we go. Fist oh. flying. Go! It's a bit of a Let in there. Smack him. Oh, but the energy rooms are building on each side. Oh, and the man there, Danny Crowley's man goes down. Yeah. <laughs> but he's got his skill. Danny won and Warren nil. This space off's very tricky to get hold of. There we go. The Greens have got I it. I don't know. Sure, he's got a rebound, oh. but the defense picks it up. I mean, maybe she should vary his shots. You've got two shots. A straight A is a low shot. Double tap the A button and you get a high shot, like a slap shot. OK, Danny tried to dribble in a little bit too close in. The goalie got it. Oh, no, this looks dangerous. One's picked it up. He picked oh, it up. Oh, oh, what a goal. One all. Oh, what a beautiful goal there, Dave. Right round the goal. Yeah. We hear the chance. They're all chanting for Danny there. He might well, be the Danny's favourite. Well, Danny, what's wrong with Warren? He's got this awful green kit to put up with. And they're chanting for that's, Danny. That's probably why they don't like him. OK, and now they're going to come again. Tries a long shot, but it's comfortably saved by Danny's keeper. He's got to get it. Oh. Actually slotted it into the net, and but the time has just run out. Run out of time. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Well, Warren, commiserations there. The challenge was to beat Curly. You got an honourable draw, which is better than anyone else did. So talk us through what, how, how do you think you failed to get that elusive victory? I managed to get one back, but just couldn't get it past the goalie. So, okay, now Danny. Still undefeated. Is there anyone out there who can beat you? Well, Warren nearly did. It was close match and he deserves credit for it. OK, well, we'll find out if anyone can next week. Meanwhile, round of applause for our challenger, Warren Brazier, and the undefeated champion, Danny Curley! <laughs> That's it for another show. Be sure to join us next week when Take That will be here. Andy Marich is warming up for that with a little Sprat Thermidor with rice pilaf. So I'm off for a nibble and I'll see you next week. Good night.